Hello, this is Jim McKeith, developer evangelist for Realm Object Software. I'm going to show you how to create a Windows Phone 7 application in Visual Studio using Oxygen for .NET. Come here and select New Project. And you want to select Silverlight for Windows Phone. Windows Phone application is what we're going to use right now. You have some other options here for making more complex applications. I'm going to also point out that there is XMake XNA Game Studio available for creating Windows Phone games. Now, there's nothing that says you can't make a game using the Silverlight for Windows Phone, but it all comes down to the type of graphics available to you. You can actually do quite a bit of neat stuff with Silverlight, so we're going to stick with Silverlight for now, but just so you know that you can use the XNA Game Studio as well. If you do not have these templates here, then that means you have not installed the Windows Phone 7 SDK and toolkit. You need to download that from create.msdn.com, install it. If it's still not available, then make sure you've up installed the latest version of Oxygen for .NET, which comes with Embarcadero Prism. I'm going to give our app a name, my Oxygen app, and go ahead and create it. By default, it comes in here with the three panel view. This is the design view or preview. This is the XAML view, and here we have the Solution Explorer and Property Editor. Solution Explorer lets you navigate through the different files in your application. This is the main page.xaml that we're looking at right now. There also is a code behind file here. That's the main page xaml.pass, which is the oxygen source file for this. These three here are in sync. So when I select page name, it selected the text block with the name of page title and the text of page name. Over here, text block, page title, page name. If I change this here and say home, you'll see it updated here and here. And then if I add page here, then it adds it here as well. So those are all in sync. You can edit in either of these places and get the get it here. You can also select from here or here to navigate around. You can select in here and it nav changes your or selection over here as well. Another way you can make selections is with the document outline. So I'm going to go ahead and undock this here. The document outline provides a hierarchical view of the different XAML controls in here. You'll see here, here's the phone application page, which is this root node up at the top. Here is the grid layout, which, or the grid, which is the layout root. This is right here. Now a grid is a type of control or a type of layout control in Silverlight in XAML that allows you to define columns and or rows. So in this case, it has a row definition attached to it where controls can be placed. So it's a good way to uh, lay things out. So in this case, I have a row that has a height of auto, which means it's going to be as tall as it has content for. And then the last one is going to be remaining height. You can add new columns and rows by simply clicking in this area here. Here's how I add columns. You can also add them by editing the XAML directly, or you have a column definition property over here where you can add columns definitions. You can also change the type of column here by, if I see if I mouse over that, those buttons show up. You can change what type of uh, sizing it has on it. The only way to delete is either by deleting the zit in the XAML or deleting it from the collection editor. Uh, that. In here, the next type of layout control I'm going to show you here is the stack panel. Now the stack panel has an orientation. It defaults to vertical, but it can be either vertical or horizontal. Everything that you put inside a stack panel gets stacked together based on that orientation. Okay, so if I change this to horizontal, see it now put this text block here and the next text block after it. And since the row height was auto, you notice the row got smaller. So I'm going to change this back to vertical and it stacked it that way. So you could use this to put a text block next to an edit box to create a labeled edit box. And then you can then place that stack panel in a grid cell like it is here. So it's a good way to have a flowed layout where you're not explicitly specifying things down to the pixel where they're at on the screen. You'll notice there's a property here, grid.row equals zero. If there's, if it's not specified, it's going to automatically be in row zero, column zero. This is how you specify which row it's in. It's also available as a property over here, 
grid.row. If a stack panel or any control is on a grid, then it can have that property. If it's not on a grid, that property is not available. So that property is only available when it's on a grid, when it makes sense. We're going to go ahead and add a control here. So go to the toolbox. This is where all your controls are available to you. So here's the stack panel and here's your grid. There's also canvas is their layout control, which you only specify things in relative pixels inside the canvas. So it doesn't have columns or rows or an orientation of vertical versus horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and put a button in here for now. Here's our button. The button you'll notice has arrows here showing that it's anchored to those two sides. And if you come over here, here's our grid. And we'll notice we're in row one. So this is row zero, this is row one. And the button has margin set. So the margins means it's 114 from the left, 67 from the top, and then the zeros means it's not anchored on those sides. So if I was to click this here, now it's anchored to the right, and you'll notice it has a 182 there. Click it again, it takes the 182 away. So that's how things are anchored in place. Go ahead and add an event handler to this button. So I can double click the button or I can go over here to the events tab and double click inside the click event handler. This takes us to the code behind file. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is this is, you'll see the word keyword here, partial. It's a partial class. So you'll notice I'm adding the event handler for button one, but nowhere in here do we see a definition for button one. And the reason is, is the button is defined in the XAML itself. So technically there's actually a, another file behind the scenes. You don't need to worry about that. That's creates, so the XAML creates this third oxygen file behind the scenes that compiles the other half of the partial class. But for all intents and purposes, this is the definition of the button that you work with here. So button one's not in here. So I'm going to do a message box show. So I'm going to just type message box dot show and type hello world. Silverlight uses a essentially a subset of the .NET framework. It's actually is a different code. Some of it's a different code base. So there are some slight differences in behavior. And it's a subset because it doesn't have access to, for example, ASP.NET, because it really doesn't make sense to run an ASP.NET application from your Windows Phone 7 device. So it's a subset and it's a slight differences, but 99% of it's going to be exactly what you need and behave the way you expect it to. Go ahead and run this. You want to make sure you have Windows Phone 7 emulator selected from the target selection drop down here. If you've connected your Windows Phone device and you want to set it up for debugging, you can use that as well, but we're going to stick to the emulator for now. And we'll go ahead and hit start debugging. Here comes the emulator. Here's our application. Notice the title's been changed now to home page. And here's the button that we added. So I can use my mouse here to simulate a finger since I don't have a touch screen and touch the button. It says, hello world. I can touch this. Okay to dismiss it. The, if I click start and then click back, it actually resumes my application where it left off and there's the application again. If I click back from here, it actually kills the application. You notice it stopped debugging in the background. So some little subtleties to how Windows Phone 7 handles the uh, switching of applications. So there you go. If you follow along, you're able to create your first Windows Phone application, Windows Phone 7 application in Oxygen for .NET. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you have fun creating other amazing applications with Oxygen for .NET and Windows Phone 7. Thank you.